Welcome to a new video! Okay. It's about our favorite country, Italy, specifically the Amalfi Coast, which is probably one of the most beautiful regions in the whole world. And we've been there already three times. And today we will share all of our highlights from our last trip, including such places like Positano and Capri. And we will also talk about where to stay, when to go and how to get around. So stay tuned! But before we start, a little bit more about us. I'm Julia, this is Sven and this fluffy guy over here is Felix. And together we travel around the world. Felix has been to more than 30 countries and Sven and I to more than 60. And we love to share our experiences here so you can have a similar trip to the one that we had. Let's start with some basic info. So the Amalfi Coast is located in southern Italy, south of Naples to be exact between the Gulf of Naples and the Gulf of Salerno. It's a part of the Sorrento Peninsula, in particular the southern part of the peninsula, between the towns of Positano and Vietri sul Mare. And the region is famous for its blue and yellow tiles and for growing crops such as chilies and lemons. That's what it's famous for, as you can see on Felix Bandana today. And I'm wearing black. <laughs> no, not black, I'm wearing yellow because of the lemons. <laughs> Let's continue with the point of how to get to the Amalfi Coast. You can either take a train to Salerno or to Naples or you can fly to Naples, which most of the people do. And from there you can take a bus, a shuttle bus or a taxi to get to your destination anywhere at the Amalfi Coast. There are no train tracks at all on the Amalfi Coast, so these are the only options to actually get to the south of the peninsula. The car ride from Naples to Positano itself takes around one and a half hours. The next point is about how to get around. So as Sven said earlier, the Amalfi Coast is a bigger area, so you basically need to get from one town to the other. And one of the options to get around is simply by bus. There are bus stops in every single town, but the buses don't operate like... 24-7? Uh, yeah, 24-7. I, I think you can still go in the evening, but there are not as many connections as during the day. And during high season, it can get pretty crowded. Sometimes we saw a bus stop with 200 people that were waiting for a bus. There are also boats connecting the towns, but usually there's only one departure per hour. So, uh, and they always just go during daylight, so whenever it gets dark there are no boats anymore. Exactly. That's why we had our own car and would also recommend you to have a rental if you don't go in your own car. If you are in a bigger group, if you are only two people, you can also rent a scooter. This is fun but also a bit dangerous and scary <laughs> because the roads are super narrow with lots of curves and people are driving like crazy. But uh, yeah, if you are up for an adventure, you can do it. What we loved about having our own car was that we were super flexible, so we could drive whenever we wanted. Sometimes we stayed in some villages until midnight when no more uh, public transport was operating. This was super convenient. On the map, all the towns look super close to each other and there's usually only a distance of, let's say, 20 kilometers between one town to another, but you need more than one and a half hours to get from one place to another because uh, there's so much traffic and there are often traffic lights saying that you can't continue your trip because the roads are too narrow, that there's only enough space for one direction. And due to the lack of space and the style of the houses being chopped into the mountain, there are not many parking options available, which means the ones that are there are super expensive. Um, for a day of parking, we usually pay at least 50 euros, sometimes uh, even 90 or 100 euros. Mm. So be prepared for a lot of money for parking. We will now share all the most famous towns along the Amalfi Coast starting from west to east and what to do in each of these towns, starting with the most famous one, Positano. It's also my favorite one and probably if you see a picture from the Amalfi Coast, it's from Positano. So most people think the Amalfi Coast is Positano, but it's only a village of many. 
Yeah. In Positano you have this famous beach and there's a beach club called Lincanto Beach Club. If you want to stay there for the day you can rent a beach chair which is I think 35 euros per beach chair and you can only rent two because two beach chairs always comes with one umbrella. That's why, uh, yeah, it's at least 70 euros, so quite pricey. And um, we went in the evening to avoid that. It was so empty during, I think, 7 p.m. and we watched the sunset and went for a swim. It was super beautiful. We can highly recommend that. You can also just go for a walk around town, but make sure to wear flat shoes because I think from the highest to the lowest point, there are 700 steps. So yeah, not that easy, but it's all worth it, I promise. And along the streets you will find many cute shops. And before we went, I tried to find outfits with lemons so, so desperately. And I can just recommend to not buy anything in advance. Just go to Positano or other towns along the Amalfi Coast because every shop sells these outfits. So you will find plenty of them there. Another fun thing you can do in Positano is going on a private boat tour. We can highly recommend doing that. We went for a sunset tour with Blue Star Positano and it was so, so beautiful. We basically drove around for one and a half or two hours mm -hmm. and uh, saw all the cute towns from the water and it was very romantic. <laughs> but we were with his brother. So. <laughs> <laughs> and with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> The next town is called Praiano and most of the people actually skip that town because there is not that much to do, nothing too special uh, except for one hidden bar called Cafe Mirante and from that bar you can actually see Positano and when you go there during sunset it's just beautiful because the sun sets right behind Positano and it's amazing, you should do that definitely. And then there is another spot you should also visit, it's right in between Positano and Praiano at the street. It's kind of a little curve and a parking spot right in, th in this curve. And there is one famous fruit seller and he sells chilies and stuff like that. You, you can't miss this spot. It looks very Instagrammable. Go there during the day to see the fruit seller and during sunset to see the most beautiful Yeah, you have sunset. the best view of Positano, it's just amazing. Yeah. Next up on the coast is the cute town, it's not really a town, but more a beach um, called Fiordo di Furore. And it's basically just a bridge and if you climb down a few steps you will be in a yeah, small beach area with crystal clear blue water. It's super nice. Dogs are more than welcome. You can even rent a beach chair there, but there's nothing else. So there are no toilets or restaurants. And parking is also a bit difficult because um, there's just a street and you can't just leave your car there because the street is too narrow. We parked at a restaurant close by called Euroconca, which was the only option available. And I think we had to pay 50 euros and 25 of that. Uh, could be used as a food coupon yeah. in the restaurant. So after the beach we went to the restaurant to have some, th some drinks. Next up is the town called Amalfi. So the Amalfi Coast is called after that town. It's pretty much in the center of the Amalfi Coast and yeah it's a bigger town with a beautiful cathedral. You can just walk around and from that town we took a ferry going to Capri. We only planned one day to spend in Capri and we can definitely say it was not enough. I think you can spend one or two weeks there. It would be nice as well. So what we did within this one day was that we visited the gardens of Augustus. You have a beautiful view there on the two rocks. I always forgot the name, Faranguli, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also walk down via Krupp from there and look at the ocean and we also did a private boat tour, something similar to what we did in Positano, but we basically drove around the whole island. It was very very nice. During the day we, we even passed through the famous rocks. I think you could also visit some beaches, there should be some beautiful beaches, but we didn't have the time for that unfortunately. The next little town along the Amalfi coast is called Atrani, which is just a stunning town with a beautiful church in the middle of it and you can also just walk around the town, maybe visit the beach and have a look at this spectacular church. Not far from Atrani there is the town called Ravello, which feels like there is a completely different atmosphere compared to the towns along the coast because it's located in the mountains and the 
climate is also much cooler, I would mm -hmm. say. It's, it's very green compared to the coastline. In Ravello you can just walk around, there are also many shops and restaurants, it's super pretty. And what we did was visiting Villa Rufolo and Villa Cimbrone. There, uh, there's a small entrance fee, I think of 8 or 10 euros per person, but it's definitely worth it because from there you have amazing views, they have super nice gardens with lots of plants and lots of lizards. Felix was hunting all the time, he loved that. <laughs> it's super nice, worth a visit. Felix is so lazy. <laughs> Very sleepy today, like every day. <laughs> So after Ravello there are the two towns called Minori and Maiori. Those towns are not as pretty as Atrani or Positano, but they're pretty famous for staying at the town. So the prices there are cheap compared to the rest of the Amalfi Coast. Between those towns there is a little hike. It's actually just a walk, it's not that long. It's called the Hike of Lemons. So you walk across all those beautiful lemon farms and during the day you can just enter those lemon farms and get a lemonade or something like that. It's very, very nice. We did this walk in the evening, so all of the farms were already closed, but we could also recommend um, to visit the camping Bella Baia. It's also in Maiori and they have some beautiful lemon trees. You can even camp underneath them. Just a little side fact, if you want to see those lemons at the trees, you should visit around June maybe in May, because in the end of June, at the beginning of July, I think they harvest the lemons and there won't be any lemons anymore. The last town along the Amalfi coast is Vietri sul Mare. We haven't been there yet, but we saw some pictures and it looks super beautiful, but it's not as popular. I think there's not so much to see compared to the other towns. Another secret spot you could visit is an island called Procida. Procida. <laughs> So we took a ferry from Naples to get there and it's just a very small island. It's famous for those beautiful colorful buildings. They're in pastel colors. It yeah, looks it looks very nice. nice, but it's also very very small So you can just spend a few hours there and walk around the whole island and then head back to Naples That's what we did to eat the best pizza in the world but be prepared for a very bumpy ferry ride oh, yeah. <laughs> on the way there. Um, <laughs> this stuff was walking around with bags to puke <laughs> for the passengers. And, and the people did actually. Though. Yeah, many a people lot. did. Me as well. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> a few more things you can do along the Amalfi Coast are renting a vintage car, for example. We also wanted to do that, but they cancelled last minute because Felix was too big or I don't know. Um, but I think it's, it's very, very nice. And you can also just relax at one of the wonderful beach clubs. In Italy, most spots at the beach belong to beach clubs and you have to pay a small fee, usually like 10 euros for a beach chair per day. Day. and then you can also use their restroom and their shower and have access to a very clean and nice beach and they sell some drinks and snacks snacks as well it's it's very nice we love it another thing we also didn't do but i think it's very nice is the hike of the gods it's between the major towns and yeah, maybe you should do it not during the high season because it gets pretty hot and if you go during that time, maybe try to avoid during the midday sun. The next point on our list is where to stay at the Amalfi Coast. So there are amazing hotels with amazing views, but those hotels also have amazing prices, so... Talking about 1000 euros per night. At least, so those very famous hotels in Positano, they can cost up around 20,000 euros. Per night, yeah, but a normal basic three-star hotel is 1000 euros. That's just crazy. <laughs> if you don't book a lot of time in advance. Yeah, so many people actually recommend to stay in Salerno or Sorrento, but we think that's just a little bit too far away because we already talked about the driving distance. Uh, I mean, it's not that far in terms of kilometer, but it takes just a long time to get to the points along the Amalfi Coast. That's why we always stayed in Maiori, like we already said. This place we can only recommend you to do it as well because it has amazing views, it has an amazing beach and the prices are very cheap compared to the rest of the Amalfi Coast. Very cheap. Yeah. If you compare it to Positano, it's very cheap. Yeah, you pay around 200 euros per night, maybe, in a, in a good hotel, four-star hotel. You're probably wondering what's the best time to visit the Amalfi Coast, and we would say 
that you should avoid the high season so maybe go in May or June um, but be prepared that the water temperatures might not be warm enough to actually go swimming I think in June it should be fine but May is maybe a bit too cold and then again in September so last time we were there in July I think and August these are the high season months and uh, it's it, it can get pretty packed and it's also pretty hot so uh, yeah it's not as relaxed compared to the other months of the year and from October to April many hotels are actually closed because there are not many tourists and it's also rainy and cold sometimes the other point we have to mention is how dog friendly is the Amalfi Coast and we can only say it is dog friendly like the rest of Italy. Italy is pretty much one of the most dog friendly countries in the whole world so you can take your dog anywhere um, in bars, into restaurants. We always took him to the ferries as well so there were no problems at all except for those vintage car company, company yeah. but yeah if you're not sure if you can bring your dog to, to a certain place just call them ask them and they will probably say yes because they love dogs and if you want to check if your hotel is actually dog friendly just add the dog filter at your booking website to check it and if you don't find any of those filters you can also call them to ask to just to make sure that you, your dog can actually stay with you at your hotel. And maybe you have to pay a fee for the dog, like a cleaning fee per day. Last time we paid for Felix, I think 20 euros per day. Oh Felix, God. for the last part you, you get up, huh? Yes. <laughs> He's awake again. <laughs> and this video is already coming to an end. We really hoped you liked it and it was helpful to plan your next trip. We always try to share our experiences <laughs> so you can also have an amazing time. And going to the Amalfi Coast is so, so worth it. So thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and <laughs> He's, He's saying goodbye already, so see you again next week. Bye bye. bye. Ciao, ciao.